Hi everyone, this is Fabi and in today's video we'll be talking about the widely used embedded platforms for hobbyists, namely the Arduino, the ESP32, the Raspberry Pi Pico and the Raspberry Pi itself. We will be talking about when each of these platforms will prove to be useful and also towards the end of the video why you shouldn't limit your embedded learning just to these. We will begin by talking about the Arduino, the ESP32 and then the Raspberry Pi Pico because these share a lot of similarities. They're based on the microcontroller so they don't run full-fledged computer OS's and they're really good at interfacing with sensors, actuators and other chips through the GPIO pins and serial interfaces that they have. Quickly before jumping to today's video, I want you guys to hear a short message from today's sponsor, PCBWay. Special thanks to PCBWay, which is a one-stop shop for all your PCB prototyping, 3D printing and CNC machining needs. Click the link in the description to buy 5 PCBs with 2-4 to four day shipping for under $30. I've personally used PCBWay before being sponsored by them to order PCBs for myself and over 100 colleagues from university for a class project and the interaction with them has always been great, same as with the quality of the delivered PCBs. No matter how complex your PCB requirements are, PCB way has got you covered. Okay, so let's start with Arduino, probably the most accessible embedded platform in the world. Because of the low price, it's even used in high schools around the world to get children accustomed to basic electronics and programming. It's a great starting point because the barrier of entry is very low, both on the financial side with kits available for less than $50 which include all sorts of sensors and other add-ons which you can use, and also on the knowledge side because there are so many ready-to-go libraries that you can basically plug and play everything you would think of. This means that interfacing the Arduino with other chips, sensors or actuators is really going to be straightforward. And while this is definitely an advantage when starting out, if you're going to limit yourself to just Arduino, you won't learn as much in the long run. Arduino isn't just limited to the overly simplified Arduino IDE with its sketches though, as it's based on the 80 Mega family of microcontrollers. Out of the platforms we will be talking about today, the 80 Mega also has the simplest architecture and the least resources, which could prove to be useful when switching over to a traditional IDE and learning to work with the registers of the microcontroller itself. The ESP32 is similar to Arduino because it can be used with the same IDE and so this means that the plethora of libraries which are available for Arduino can also be used on the ESP32. Most of the time, because the pins between the Arduino and the ESP32 don't match up, you will have to make slight changes for the libraries to work, but this can actually be an advantage because you are tinkering with the code which will make you more familiar with it than if you were to just download the library and run it. Compared to Arduino, the ESP32 has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi which opens up a world of possibilities when it comes to embedded projects, especially in home automation, using MQTT or other protocols. Price-wise it's cheap and while you can program it in C or C++ using its own IDE, the architecture of the ESP32 is more complex being a dual core system and so it's going to be less easy to approach for newcomers. Out of the two Raspberry Pi platforms, we will be talking about the Pico first because it's the most similar to the Arduino and the ESP32. The Pico is essentially the newcomer in this world, but it has an incredible price of just $4 and it allows writing code in both MicroPython and C. While it's a lot more powerful than the classic Arduinos, it does also consume more power, which is a disadvantage when running on battery. It can be used together with the Arduino IDE, but the compatibility with the libraries of Arduino isn't where it should be yet, and it also doesn't have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, which is a bummer. On the other hand, the Raspberry Pi is basically a full-fledged computer running a computer operating system. With up to 8GB of RAM, a powerful CPU, an HDMI output and multiple USB ports, you can basically use this as your main computer nowadays. The advantage of the Raspberry Pi is exactly the fact that you have this many resources available and you can write software for it just like you would for a normal computer 
with the benefit that it uses less power than a conventional computer. This means that you can run neural networks, you can process images locally, or you can do other CPU intensive tasks. It also shares some similarities with the lower end embedded platforms like individually programmable GPIO pins or serial interfaces like SPI, I2C or WART. The Raspberry Pi enables beginners to learn their way around computer file systems, working with files in code, and it's also a great introduction into Linux. There are plenty of projects online which are centered around the Raspberry Pi, so there is no shortage of tutorials or documentation. Personally, I like to use the Raspberry Pi for web scraping tasks, which populate Google Sheets with information that I have an interest in. Now that you have an overview of these platforms, the question might be, why would you ever venture into the quite complex and complicated world of writing embedded C code without the help of the many, many libraries available? Well, first of all, it's important to keep on learning more when these platforms start feeling easy for you. While they are a springboard into embedded systems, they are by no means what goes into production, what goes into the consumer electronics you buy, or other systems we rely on a daily basis. This is because as soon as you think about going into production, optimization is king. This means code optimization, space optimization, but most importantly, cost optimization. With the platforms that we talked about today, costs are in the end higher than a custom-made PCB for your project. Optimizing code is also out of the question because as soon as you use libraries, you have a lot of code which makes them universal, but that's not what you're aiming for when you go into production. And also, space optimization goes out of the question again because uh, the size of the PCB cannot be changed. Oh, and also, in today's world, you are limited by the supply of such hobby boards, with the Raspberry Pi, for example, right now being very hard to get even in low quantities. So, if you want to make a career out of this, get your hands dirty with the Arduino or the others, but move over to more bare-bones platforms sooner rather than later, so that you can pick up on the skills which are necessary to land you that job. Second point is, Think that someone has to write these libraries for the hobby platforms in the first place. And wouldn't it be cool if you could write your own library if you find that one doesn't exist yet? I definitely think this is something to consider. If you're new to the channel, you might not know I do a series called Embedded Systems Explained on YouTube, and the aim of this series is to explain embedded systems in a simple to understand manner and to give you examples of where you can use the concepts learned so make sure you watch the other videos as well if you want to learn more about embedded systems. I will put a link in a card on the screen right now, or you can also find it in a pinned comment. Anyways, if you want to buy an Arduino, an ESP32, Raspberry Pi or Pi Pico, I've put links in the description to buy these on Amazon so that you can get started with the platforms really quickly. Thanks for watching, I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, make sure to like it, subscribe and hit the bell icon as my stats tell me that a lot of you guys watching still aren't subscribed yet. Stay tuned for more content, I will catch up with you in the next video.